you know, when you said every session, we're like, oh, the house is chaos, da, da, da. I was just like, oh, it's just like a thing that Alina says when she's like prepping Alina's for just things. not prepared for anything. Alina's really disorganized. No, it's not even disorganized. It's just like, you know, people have their phrases when they say things, right? Or it's like, oh, it's just like the thing that they commonly say when they're like prepping in advance of something. Um, or at least that's what I thought it was for you. But no, your house is absolute fucking chaos. It literally took us, y'all, about 30 minutes to get the men out of the fucking house. I literally was sitting here just, my eyes are so wide and my brain can't comprehend why the words, yeah. please leave, leave, is it registering? Or please take the dogs and leave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's comedy gold. <laughs> I just like. I'm I'm not kidding when I say like it's I, I'm herding fucking cattle and cats all day every day in this house like it's pretty well and then you know like I said so I want to build out a proper like just a space for myself even if it's like a little phone booth maybe I should buy one of those pop up phone booths that they sell on like Wayf- Wayfair um, I mean it might be claustrophobic but because every time I have to like set everything up now imagine doing this by myself. So literally, all I could hear as you were setting up was dun 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 dun. It's just literally, it's like a ring circus. In the- it is a circus between Mark, between Benji, Frankie. It's just, it's wild. This house out all the time, all the time, like literally all the time. And that's just when it's us. Imagine when like we have like seventeen people here every other day as well. So it's just shit's pretty funny. <sighs> This is this is why I'm drinking tequila at 12:30 on a Sunday. By the way, I really really like these. Oh really? Oh, no. Yeah. You don't like it? No, I, I enjoy it quite thoroughly. Actually, I really like them, and I'm very glad that I saw them at Trader Joe's because you know me, I love Trader Joe's. Um, wait, wait, I'm so excited. This is so fun. This feels like I feel like it feels like a real podcast. Oh, we're chilling, we're talking, we're in person, we're trying to persuade my husband to, like, move to L.A. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I think, like, just do it for the pod. You know how they say, do it for the gram? Do it for the pod here. Come on. Um, if someone could just, you know, give us a millions of dollars contract-wise, um, yeah. Making them done would be really, really simple. <laughs> like, wouldn't just stop that, just that. Um, yeah. No, but I think, yeah, it, it just, it feels, it feels really nice. Mm-hmm. I know that we're, we're like, where do we look? Where do we look? What do we do with our hands? What do we do? Mm-hmm. Um, no, but it's been, it's just been, it's always fun, but it's been very fun today. Um, even, and now, and now you get it. Like, I'm not lying when I say, like, I'll be there. I never thought late. you were lying. I was just like, oh, she's just like prepping and dealing with whatever. I just didn't realize the extent mm-hmm. at which this household was operating at. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, this was, this was honestly a comedy show for me. Like, I don't think I need to pay for a comedy show if I were down in LA. I would just come to your household. <laughs> just like, oh God, it's like the ADHD, ADD. Prozac anxiety triggered household. Like that's what's happening at all times. Um, okay. So we, I think, are recovered from yesterday. Yesterday was kind of a doozy. Yeah. I mean, first off, for our listeners, I don't know if we mentioned this um, on Monday's episode, but we went to a Coachella themed 30th birthday party. Shout out to our girl Allie. Yeah. Um, the shot queen. The shot queen. queen. Literally the twerk queen. Um, a, I absolutely loved that theme. Absolutely loved it. Um, but B was also not expecting, I think, to be that exhausted. And it, like it made me realize last night when I was reflecting on how tired we were when we came back. I was like, is this is is this 30? Is is this 30? Bitch, I told you. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I literally told you the day you turn 30, like nothing makes sense anymore. Yeah. Things that you could do, you can no longer do. Mm. Things like uh, just you, you hurt in places that you didn't know you could hurt. Like I'm sitting up against a freaking back thingy. I'm sorry. Do you want a pillow? No, no I'm, I'm totally. Oh, you're just 30. Okay. Give me, give it six months. You'll need one. Um, wow. yeah, no, it's, oh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, it's just, I'm just saying your, your body just fucking hurts nowadays, but okay. So back to the Coachella theme party. So yeah. fun. I realized I didn't, I apparently don't know what people were at Coachella because I feel like everyone else was very to, 
I think everyone was dressed up in varying degrees of Coachella-ness, but then also like just dressed upness. Um, you, I just, I felt like you were like getting in your head about it quite a bit. You were like, but is this Coachella enough? Is this Coachella? And there were people there who would like dress to the nines and like form fitting dress. I was like, that's not very Coachella, but still I think the beauty of Coachella is like you get to wear whatever the fuck you want. Okay, fine. Yeah. I think, I think I finally, like, I think I'm just like a little bit behind where I'm supposed to be. And what I mean by that is I was like, what the fuck do people wear in Tulum? I don't think I nailed that. So then I think yesterday I finally figured out what people wear in Tulum. And then you're like, this is what I'm going to wear to Coachella theme thing. But I don't think, but my point is like, I should have been wearing that in Tulum and that's not what I needed. Like that wasn't too theme yesterday. So maybe in like two, three weeks from now, I'll maybe figure out what I could have, should have worn to a Coachella theme party. Um, Love it. But anyway, it was fun. Yeah. I Great really, time. really enjoyed it. Um, and it's so good I think because of the fact that Coachella is right around the corner like I did not realize that until we were at this party and I was like holy shit it's this month it's I think it's next week or this weekend yes yeah, the weekend can you believe that like I feel like time has moved so quickly <laughs> so quickly um but yeah I I thought like oh we're doing Coachella theme because you know our friend Ali is like really into music festivals mm-hmm. and going to concerts and stuff like that. she is Coachella in yeah. real life yeah, yeah yeah she is the epitome of what Coachella I think is but um I didn't realize it until we were at the party I was like holy shit it's because Coachella is in a week <laughs> like that's what it was um yeah it's kind of wild to me Coachella's in a week well I was thinking about the fact that we're literally in Q2 Oh, you, from a business perspective. Oh. No, but I'm just saying, like, we're literally a quarter of the week through the year. Of quarter of the week. We're a quarter of the year through the year. Quarter of the way through the year. Wow. Someone is still recovering <laughs> from yesterday's uh, shindig, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, we are so old. We literally got home and, like, we're asleep by, like, 9.30. Or we were, like, ready to sleep. Yeah. We watched some TV, and I literally turned over, and Mark and Elena just passed out on the couch. And I was like... Okay, cool. And so I literally like moved a little and your eyes fluttered open. I was like, Elena, just, just go to bed. You're like, no, just keep watching. I was like, no, just, just go to bed. <laughs> I think I slept 10 hours last night. Which is fantastic. Oh God, I love it. Sometimes I, sometimes I love myself when I do things like that. And I'm just like, oh, you know what I think about okay. it? Why is it that when we're little, we fucking hate naps, but like now as adults, we relish in the absolute shit out of those things. Like, I kind of wonder, what, 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 like, how does that change for us? I don't know anything about children, but I, and I guess they need naps. Like, why else would we make them nap? I mean, my, in my head, I'm like, because they're annoying and you want to have a few hours in the day. But I think, I think kids, like, also, like, need it or else they get cranky and tired, right? Because they really do need more sleep probably because they're, like, exerting so much energy. For me, I just, I just physically can't stay awake anymore. I just can't. Like, my eyes are just always falling asleep. I'm always like, huh? huh? That's so crazy. Maybe I have Epstein Bar or like narcolepsy or something. You know, I had a friend who had narcolepsy. I feel like I might be like that. No, because they will fall instantly, like in oh, anywhere. It's like little. Yeah. Okay, no, it's not like that. I have fallen asleep in a club though. Like I've done some shit. Excuse me, what? Yeah, yeah I've, I've fallen, fallen asleep in a club, club before. Like literally, just been like, hey, I'm gonna go lay down in the booth, put it out. You've fallen asleep at a club with, like, loud blaring music. I can fall asleep anywhere. Well, previously, now I do kind of need the perfect conditions. Like, the temperature has to be good. I have to have the ability to put one leg out from under the covers. I need my sleep mask. It has to be a particular weight of sleep mask. Um, I do also like... I like the Calm app. Mark is not a fan of the Calm app, but I love a bedtime story when he lets me have my moments. Um... Has to be dark. But previously, like, yeah, I could literally, I, I would sleep on the train in New York City all the way to school. I would sleep for an hour both ways. I can't do that. Like, I can't even sleep on planes. Even if, like, I were upgraded to, like, business class, for example, and you have, like, the lay down stuff, I've never been able to sleep on a plane. Never. Or maybe I am narcoleptic. Well, I think some people just, like, are more in tune maybe with their body's uh, needs and rhythms. I'm, I'm not so much. Maybe. 
It could be that. Maybe I'm just a lazy piece of shit. And so no, it's just you know when your body needs rest, <laughs> and your body immediately goes into it. So, yeah, anyways, yeah, anyway, okay. So on, another note. <laughs> on another um, note, uh, wild. I know we talked about this on Monday. It's kind of wild to me that Kanye has dropped out two weeks beforehand, um, and that the weekend is now. And Swedish House Mafia. Yes. Which also, to your point yesterday, or to like Monday's point, like, oh my God, they're still around? What? I literally thought they broke up. Like, I thought the band broke up. So. I just thought that they were just like, you know, in a lull. You know, some people have like years where they release stuff and then years where they don't. I am almost. Oh, she's researching this. Reasons, in real time. See? Wait, they did break up? Swedish House Mafia reflected in their split nine years ago. Sebastian and Grosso, Axel and Steve Angelo of Swedish House Mafia, Apasha, Biza, we were drained, we were tired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, did break up so they broke up on tw- 2012, and then I guess they got back together. Interesting. Okay, so this is maybe like their comeback? Literally, I didn't know they got, they got back together. Anyway. Um, um, I think it's interesting yeah. that um, they ended up getting the $8.5 million, though, that they were egging the Coachella folks on. Because I felt like... Wait, so Kanye... And Swedish House Mafia each got eight. And the weekend. Oh, sorry. That's what I meant to say. Um, so I don't know if they each got, but I do know that that the weekend fought to ensure that he got the yes. same amount. But I don't know if it's split between them both or if it's separated. I have no idea. I'm going to see if we can get that. No, I, I, I don't know if they got it. Anyway, we're going to look into that. Um, however, it lo- so it looks like I know the weekend pushed back and he was like, you're going to pay me exactly what you were going to pay Kanye. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting too, to think of like how far Coachella has come. Uh, yes. So when did it become like influencer Haven? Cause I feel like it was around for a long time before Instagram was around. Oh, a hundred percent. So, um, actually the first ever, well, I would say the event that kind of uh, was the seed in which Coachella then grew from okay. was back in 1993. Um, was so well before Instagram was <laughs> around. Well before Instagram. I mean, I was one year old at that time. Um, so Pearl Jam, they uh, were boycotting Ticketmaster because of all of the service fees and charges that they were charging for tickets to any venue since they had control, pretty much like majority control of everything. Yeah. Um, they were boycotting them and actually utilized Golden Voice, which is like the main organizer for Coachella. They used them to help organize the venue, the Empire um, Polio Club. Polo Club? Polio, Polio Club. <laughs> Jesus, where Sounds am like a I? great time. <laughs> Clearly. Um, no, they uh, utilized Golden Voice to help organize um, an event that wasn't controlled by Ticketmaster. Oh. And so the Empire Polo Club was the venue that this concert was set up at. And it was a whole part of like... I want to say like anarchy type of in a sense where it's just like, I'm going to boycott this because I don't believe that one person should have majority stakehold of all of these things and, you know, charge people extra for tickets, which good for y'all Pearl Jam. Um, But that's how sort of the seed of Coachella first started. But um, that was the first ever event that Golden Voice kind of did out in the desert. Did out in the desert there. Then in 1999 is when they actually did their first ever Coachella themed music festival. Got it. Um, what is a Coachella? Do we know? I don't know. That's actually a good question. What is a Coachella? Maybe it isn't um, anything. Well, while you're researching that, um, I think I mentioned this to you earlier that I didn't know that this had anything to do with Pearl Jam and Eddie Vedder, but it's. It kind of like makes sense because earlier this year, or maybe it was last year, um, we got to go to, it's called Ohana Fest or Ohana Festival, and it's in Dana Point, California. So it's in SoCal as well, like right on, like on the beach. And it's actually Eddie Vedder's festival. So he curates it. He like, I guess like, I'm assuming he pays for it and funds it. And, you know, and he's kind of the head of all of it. And then Pearl Jam is the headliner. Nice. So we actually didn't stay for Pearl Jam because we decided not to stay in Orange County. Like we have to come back to LA and to the boys were home poor planning on our part. Cause now I'm like, when else was I going to have an opportunity to like see Pearl Jam? I'm not like their biggest fan. I know like two songs by them, but still like, I just feel like it's like a cool thing that you've done. Um, so I feel like Eddie Vedder has kind of been this, I don't know what the word is, but uh, uh, I don't want to say innovator. 
uh, security, that's not the word, um, steward of like music festivals and like music for the people and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah. Um, so I, I looked up Coachella, by the way. Okay. Tell um, us. So the origin of the name is actually unclear. Some locals believe it was in the spelling of Conchilla or Conchilla, Spanish word for the small white snail shells found in the valley's sandy soil. Vestige of a lake that dried up over over 3,000 years ago. Oh. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Okay, we're going to go with that. That sounds plausible. Yeah, that sounds doable, I guess. But um, it drives me nuts, though, when people say Coachella wrong. Coach, how, do, how do people say Coachella. It? I know, I'm like, no, it, it's Coachella. There's an E in there. Yeah. God, Coachella? Coach. Yes, there. Yes, I've never heard anybody. Say There's like one person I'm talking about that I know says it. I'm not going to call them out, but it's Coachella. <laughs> I would literally walk it's away from that Coachella. Okay, um, but wait. So you've been to Coachella, I right? Have. I have. I went um, in the year of our Lord and Savior uh, when Beyonce was headlining, <sighs> also known as Beychella. So yes, I have been to Coachella. <laughs> um, not to- Coachella, not, not Coachella. Coachella. <laughs> it was Beychella that year. Um, everyone called it that, or at least the people who were there for her, which is everyone. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was lots of fun. I think, though, I was not prepared yeah. um, for what it was going to be. Uh, it was also my first ever music festival. Like, okay. I've never been to any other music festival before that. Mind you, I was also a late bloomer when it came to concerts and stuff like mm-hmm. I didn't go to my first ever concert until I was like a senior in high school and that was because I had like aced my AP exams and my mom was like I'll let you go into SF to see Panic at the Disco oh <laughs> uh, my Panic at the Disco I'm not surprised that, that was the first show I feel like you've always had this like emo girl inside of you oh 100 i was like a little skater girl back in middle school and shit oh yeah uh-huh yep 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 yep. Mm-hmm. i think my first ever concert i actually know what it was what was it i don't remember the name of it it wasn't like a festival but it was like a pop boy band thing and 98 degrees was headlining and i believe mandy no mandy Moore opened for and think right i know i think she was there anyway it was like a bunch of like Boy banders, like I love that. that, and then I feel like that's very you. I, I, guess. I know, yeah, yeah. And then I remember the second show I was ever supposed to go to was Justin Timberlake and Christina Aguilera. Oh wow, that's a good one in Atlantic City. It took us five hours to get there because of the traffic. Wait, wait, wait! I'll never forget. I copied my sister's hair and outfit, and she was so mad at me. I wore an off-the-shoulder white tight shirt and a little pleated skirt and scrunched my hair, which is interesting because my hair is – it's not scrunched, but it's similar, you know, vibes, if you will. Um, And then she thought it was a great idea to, like, clip it on with a claw clip on the side of her head, and I was like, wait, I love that. I'm going to do that, too. My sister was pissed that I literally looked exactly like her. Finally, we get there five hours later. The show is canceled. <gasps> Why? Uh, I, I think it was like the stage collapsed or something. But wait, they never rescheduled it. They just refunded everybody. So then, fast forward like 15 years, Justin Timberlake, I bought concert uh, tickets for my sister's birthday for the two of us oh to go because we never got to see him. Yeah. I ended up in the hospital and having surgery. <gasps> so I have not seen Justin Timberlake to this day. And it's like, I, I just, I, I know about it to buy tickets because like something's going to happen. Okay. So clearly there is yeah. a negative association yes. now with anything um, just because anyway, really okay. I was in it. Wait, so um, back to music festivals. Okay. So I like, know, oh, but I need to say this one last thing though about my first ever concert. Yes. It was Brandon Yuri's birthday. He is the lead singer for Panic at the Disco. It was his birthday, and so we all, me and my crew that went, we actually came with signs and birthday hats, and because of where we were placed, we were literally, like, we had oh, our signs. Oh, that's so fun. And he pointed at, because one of his bandmates, like, tapped him, and I guess, like, in between songs, and he pointed at, at us, and he was like, oh, my God, I love you guys. Thank you. And I was like, I love you, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did your, like, little... It was like high school heart explode. Oh, a hundred percent. And for that to be my first ever concert experience too. Like just imagine like Maddie was feeling herself. Let's just say that. <laughs> I was like, yes. Um, but yeah, no, so that was my first ever concert experience. Anyways, back to festivals as we were saying. Okay. Um, 
Let's go back to festival. So, yes, that was my first ever experience at Coachella, Baychella it was. Um, and I wasn't prepared at all. And it, the, the funny thing is the crew that I went with were very well versed. Like this was probably like their third or fourth yeah. game going. Um, it was the crew from yesterday. Yes, so, exactly. It was the crew from yesterday. For context, it makes sense. We promise. <laughs> um, these girls like... So prepped, so ready. I'm literally like just stressing about outfits because mm-hmm. you know Coachella is a certain like. It's about the fashion just as much as it is the music, if not more. Exactly. It's like you want to look cute in the pictures, and so that was what I was stressing about. I didn't realize that you also need like a mask because of the sandstorms, for example. That was not communicated to me. I also realized. Oh, it would have been smart if I had brought some sunscreen, maybe to reapply throughout the day. Oh. I should have also like prioritized comfortable shoes versus like pretty shoes because you're walking for fucking miles and miles on end. They're going to be ruined anyway. That was, yeah, I learned a lot. Also, um, (laughs) for all intents and purposes, while you're at Coachella, you do partake in certain substances. (laughs) While on certain substances, uh, your jaws tend to like lock up. And so my jaws were completely sore. Like at the end of the day. Um, And so one of the girls that we had been with, we, uh, she's a nurse and I was like, Oh my God, why do my jaws feel like this? Um, and she was like, she was like, Oh, she's like, yeah, that's like actually a normal thing. When you partake in this, uh, you should definitely like have gum. And so like, like I said, completely not prepared in any way, shape or form for this whatsoever. I like like, everything you just said is exactly why I don't go to music festivals. I don't, it's It's like like literally my worst nightmare so okay i did go to one music festival one time it was edc in long island okay um i was it's a big one yes yeah, a huge one i think i was a senior in college at this point i it was like a whole thing i went with like friends of a friend so similar but my friend wasn't there and so like i knew them pretty well but it, like it was again a friend of a friend situation yeah. And I thought I was going to be really cool. And I was going to, we'll say, explore the wonders of going to a music festival. And I talked all this shit. And I was like, yeah, whatever, hook it up. And then come the day of, no, I am still little scaredy Catalina to this day. I've never gone, you know. Anyway, so instead, I think it's a grand idea to bring a water bottle. I think you can bring like one water bottle in with you to these things usually. Well, mine didn't have water and it it had vodka. Um, Let's just say the next thing I remember, I completely lose my friend's friends and I hitchhiked home. Like legitimately was on the side of the road. We not get killed. I like think about the shit that we did when we were younger. I'm just like, how did we survive all of that? (laughs) I mean, I think because of that, I, I started hitchhiking at home from bars all the time. I'd be like, you, you look like you're going home. Can you take me back to Tri Delta? Like, I would hitchhike all the time in college. Like, no, it was like, like a really problematic time in my life. And I'm very grateful that nothing happened, knock on wood, because whatever. But um, anyway, yeah. So I feel like between that, you know me, I don't do bathroom lines. I have no interest in like. Here's the thing drugs, I want to do. I feel like one time in your life, you have to try Molly. You, you just have to. I, I, I'm just too scared. Like, I really am just too scared. And I feel like if you already are going into it with that mentality, like, nothing good can come from it. So I'm good. Maybe one day, I don't know. But, like, as of today, I'm okay. Um, I will say, um, I feel like I want to do Coachella again, but I would want to do it purely VIP. Like, don't get me wrong. I had an amazing time the week that I went. No, you're a bougie week. bitch. It's okay. You can say it. No, it's not even the bougie bitch. I think it's like I would like my own space, for example. You know what I mean? Like probably to like rent out an Airbnb or a house, which I know is expensive AF um, on this weekend. My friend who's literally in escrow buying a house. Oh, we could just stay at her place now. <laughs> no, we can't. That's what she's making all her money for the whole year. Apparently, it's like a three bedroom, two bathroom. Yeah. And apparently you can rent out an Airbnb 
for like, like thousands of dollars one night. I think fifteen hundred a night. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. a night. night. So add that to like, I don't even know how expensive it is, but I think like the passes are crazy. Um, not then, that bad. I think my year it was like almost five hundred dollars for three for general. So I think probably for VIP it's like a thousand. Okay, so now you're at like. Yeah, but I feel like. But then you have to get the shuttle passes, and you have to do this, and you have to spend money on alcohol. Like, well, I think mine was with the shuttle pass. It was like five hundred oh. or close to five hundred. I don't know. I think it'll be like I think if you're gonna do it, like you I always have fly the money in on a helicopter, be picked up on the stage. Okay, now you're overdoing it with the private jet, Leo. Where are you at, Leo? <laughs> where are you at? Leo, we know you have one, Leo. Um, Take us. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean. It's so interesting, like, how much Coachella has really just changed over the years. Because when you think about it, 1993, yeah, it was, like, the seed that kind of started the concept of the Central Music Festival. But it wasn't until 99 when they first did it. They organized it. Originally, it was was supposed to be two days. They ended up, I think, doing it for one day. Um, But also, the announcement was on the same week that uh, Woodstock 1999, which, by the way, was, I guess, like, another version of a fire festival. Like, absolute fucking disaster. Was it the OG fire festival? Kind of, yeah. Um, So, for context, for our listeners, viewers, whatever medium you are listening or watching this from, um, back in 1999, some organizers decided to do sort of a a music festival that would emulate Woodstock from 1969. Peace, love, and rock and roll, right? Yeah, but apparently it ended up being riddled with, like, arson, theft, violence, sexual assault, like, rampant during that time. And what happened was is literally off of that news, Coachella was then announced. So Uh, everyone was turned off from the concept of a big music festival after that because they were like, well, look at what just happened in New York. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and so that was one of the reasons why it actually didn't do as well. They were actually drowning Probably in the red for like forever. And actually some of the musicians um, had to defer their compensation to later, knowing how in the red they were. So in 2000, the organizers decided to pass because apparently also in the 2000s, um, there was like an increase in music festivals in Southern California. So they were like, oh, we don't want to compete. So they decided not to do it. Then they restarted it it up again in 2001. And Coachella didn't become popular or like part of, I guess, influencer culture, if you will. But what influencers were back then until 2004 when Radiohead was headlining. Isn't that crazy? It took them a while to get to profitable. Oh, yeah, profitable for sure. But I still feel like it's in the last like. 10 years is when it's like literally since Instagram became a thing. I don't even think I knew what Coachella was until Instagram was around. Mm -hmm. And like, we didn't even have Instagram when I was in college or like, it was like starting to be a thing when I was in college. So that was like after 2011. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? So like 2004 is apparently when like, I don't know, maybe they hired a better PR team. Who knows? But they basically got all of this really positive press that Coachella was like the best festival ever. And also Radiohead at the time, like who doesn't love creep? Like that's probably, I think that's the only thing I know. <laughs> okay. Clearly you were not like punk rock or emo back in um, no. high school, but they, because of their popularity at the time, I think they're what skyrocketed Coachella to, to fame. Um, yeah. But here's the other interesting thing that I found out mm-hmm. too, doing some research about this. So back in 2007, uh, the Empire uh, Polo Club, they actually were like, we're thinking of changing the grounds to something else because um, and okay. because it's like apparently the deal with Coachella wasn't as lucrative and they needed to have some other reason in order to keep the grounds as is. Because right now it's pretty much like an empty field and then you have like the setups that they do and whatnot. Once a year. Exactly. So that's why when they created Stagecoach. So Golden Voice is also the organizer for oh, Stagecoach. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Exactly. And Stagecoach, for those who don't know, is sort of like the country music like equivalent to Coachella, I would say. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's like about the fashion and like cute girls and you, you drink beer. I think it's like maybe less about like Molly and more about beer. 
right? I mean, I don't know. I'm sure people do drugs at both, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, um, it's interesting. Like the inception of stagecoach was because of the fact that that. that golden voice didn't want to lose the venue space. And so they were like, okay, well, we'll have stagecoach come right after to make it more of a lucrative deal. Got it. Yeah. It also, I feel like makes sense. I feel like stagecoach is like very soon after Coachella. It's literally the weekend right after. Oh, it's literally. So it's like Coachella has two weekends. Got it. And then Stagecoach is also open for two weekends after that. Oh, okay. So they basically just build everything. They get like two fur. Oh, sorry. A two fur. Oh, yeah. Wait, so I will say, I don't know. I hate country music. I don't know if you know that about me. My mom, I grew up listening Sorry, to like, yeah. I used to be music. so close to you. Oh my God. Um, um, I grew up listening to country music because of my mom. My mom loves country music because of like the ballads. It's like they're telling a story. Sure. Okay. So I do like like a Dan and Shay speechless. I do get down to like Sam Hunt. I like like poppy country. Yeah. The twangy shit literally makes me want to blow my brains out. So when I went to Nashville um, for a bachelorette party, it was my first time in Nashville everyone that I was with are like pretty big country music fans. And so my job also literally three feet taller than everybody in the bar, but you just see me like this. Like staring at the stage and I just didn't know what to do. I was like, how do you dance this? What do you do? Like, why do you like that? I was just like, there's not enough alcohol in the world to make me enjoy this. Right. Like I had so much time to with my friends, but I was just like, I, I literally don't know what to do with my hands when I'm listening to country music. Mm. With that said, I feel like country people like really know how to party. And so I want to go to stage coach. Yeah. So I, two of the places, two of the places, two of the events that I think I'd be interested in going to, um, maybe in the next couple of years. And I think it's very doable with where we live um, stagecoach for sure. Uh huh. And Bottle Rock. I've yet to do Bottle Rock. So Bottle Rock, I feel like they always have a bomb lineup. But I heard just like because Napa is already pretty concentrated, it's already pretty busy. Yeah. I heard like logistically, Bottle Rock is not fun. It's like very annoying. Same friend that got the tickets to Ohana Fest, her like clients asked if she wanted to go to Bottle Rock this year, but it was like a VIP situation. And I was like, dang, that would have been fun. Um, But again, I heard like like finding a place to like sleep, like sometimes you end up on like a couch if you don't book, you know, a year in advance. And I heard it's kind of a logistical nightmare. I mean, we live close enough that we could probably do like the trip up. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be bad for us. And then we could just like sleep in place. Well, 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 miss. I'll be the DD yesterday and then Maddie (laughs) comes back with tequila in hand. (laughs) Um, I'm not sure if that's the smartest move for all of us. I mean, it was a X hour uh-huh. amount that we were there for. I was like, I'll sober up. It'll be fine. Anyway, it ended up being okay, guys. It ended up being okay. It ended up being all okay. I'm saying is if you're in Napa and you're in VIP and there's free wine. Yeah, but I feel like, us. But I feel, yeah, especially our group. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but like, I think what would be probably easier instead of getting lodging would probably be like hire um, a driver, like do like a party bus situation. And if you were to do VIP, maybe for the day that you would like for the headliner that you want versus because it's a three day situation, you could just pick the day that you want and just go. Yeah, and just go for that day. Okay, fine. I'm not opposed to this idea. We can discuss it in more detail. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm we'll go live the music. From it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm making this musical festival shit uh, happen. It's, <laughs> it's gonna happen, and you're gonna have a bomb time. I uh, just need to not have to wait on like a three hour line bathroom line. That's it. I think what sucks about these festivals, and this is from my own experience at Coachella, is uh, once again, I think it's very, very different from the VIP experience, which is something I want to have so I can compare and contrast to. But yes, lines are terrible for food, for drinks. Yeah. Um, the bathrooms, I wouldn't say as much like the lines aren't as bad because like throughout the day, there are like different bathroom points and they have like a plethora of porta potties. And so like people are going in and out. I think that's the only thing though, that like, meh, not a big fan of is porta potties. I also do the hover technique too. So oh. already like you're just, you know, and it's already cramped space. And you're hold, like, oh, hold God, on. Oh, we need a PSA. If anyone is not doing the hover technique. 
at a festival. No, in any porta potty. Yeah, oh, hundred <laughs> percent. And really, public restrooms. Yeah. Start. I'm looking at you. I mean, I even Start. hover at my like, like when I'm not home, I hover at work. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. I just, I just want to make sure everybody is absolutely hovering in a porta potty. Okay. We can we can go back to regular schedule. Yeah, regular schedule. Sorry, I, just want, I, just want, I was like, wait, hold on. Is that maybe we should just clarify? Yeah. I mean, I think some people don't do the hover <gasps> technique. Well, because it's like they probably utilize the seating liners. You know the. I mean, I don't think they have them in porta potties. Yeah, like I'm saying, like so. I feel like if there's like a liner and like you know, so sometimes no, nope. sometimes I will. But like, if I'm like my legs are really tired from wearing heels or something, but I won't have like I won't no. directly. No, no, no. Um, wait. So I feel like we it, we have to discuss the fire festival. Have you watched both documents? Cherries. <laughs> Documentaries. Cherries. Um, yeah, so it was Netflix and Hulu. They both did. And they both came out the same week, too, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, really funny. I was like, okay, y'all. I do have a preference for which one I thought was exponentially better. I thought the Netflix one was better. 100%. Yeah. The Hulu one. Sorry, friends. I feel like Netflix just puts a lot more money into production quality. I hate to say it, but... Um, it's just what I, 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 I feel like whether or not they do or don't, it just, it definitely appears that way. Like it looks, I feel like, I feel bad saying this, but I feel like in general, Hulu production looks, yeah, it shoddy. Look, it does. It looks like <laughs> shoddy. little budget, <laughs> which is interesting because their shows. Do you like The Handmaid's Tale? Big yeah, Little that Lies. one's actually a good one. Um, I watched some of their actual um, movie. I think their movies are a lot better than their shows to a degree. I love the holiday one, the one with Kristen Stewart, and I can't remember her name. Yes. Well, I know, I'll pause. I can't remember. I do know what you're talking about. That one I really like. There was also, they did the more recent one called Fresh with, um, what's his face? He played the Winter Soldier in Marvel. Oh my god, what? Oh my god, why am I blanking out on his name? Anyway, wonderful. Well, I wouldn't say wonderful movie. It's definitely going to go in my cult classic folder, okay. mental folder, just because I love horror movies for, oh, for our listeners. No. But it's not really horror, though. It's like a little bit suspense. There's also a little bit of comedy in there. And it's actually, I think the cinematography is, is delightful. Um, and I think the lead up of the suspension. Um, the uh, suspense, suspension. The lead up of suspense. <laughs> Key is anticipation. Ooh, oh God! That <laughs> um, was an inside joke. You'll learn with that at some point. At some point. Um, right. And so I thought it was. It, it's unique in the play that they were trying to make, and it's supposed to be sort of like a modern day analogy of what it's like to date in the digital world, and like the fears that women have about that. Okay, maybe we'll consider. Well, I, I actually okay. really enjoyed it. Um, um, but anyway, sorry. So back to the Fire Festival. Yes, Fire Festival. I think that the Netflix one is, cool. it was so engaging. Documentary. To this day, but I will whoa. not forget the guy who, um, oh. the water bottle one where he was like, yeah, I had like water bottles were stuck in customs and I didn't know what to do. And I was like, what should I do? And he was like, whatever you have to do. And he like literally mentioned that he would suck dick to get. I was ready to suck dick. dick. <laughs> just could not and the fact that he went on a documentary and just straight up said like or straight up like insinuated no he straight up said i was prepared to suck dick (laughs) meme of the century y'all that's what that became i mean he was the fucking star of the show he he almost saved fire festival pretty much well i mean he did was i think he literally saved lives without that water the people i don't think would have made it you know what i mean like literally yeah, it's so crazy to me, though. I think that is definitely more on the scammier side, but there have been um, several of, like, I think, festival scandals. So Woodstock was one of them, the 1999 one. Uh-huh. Um, you have Fire Festival, of course, but I think that, like, outside of the logistical nightmare, it was also just, like, scammy as all hell. Like, here's the thing. I think from a business school perspective, like, it's a wonderful use case as to how to use influencers in regards to marketing, 100%. So I feel like, okay, yes. And I feel like, I think we were talking about this, but right now, Netflix, Hulu, streaming services in general, it is like, we're going through another cycle of where it's like people who were a little bit insane, but crazy entrepreneurs and had such confidence in themselves that they 
scammed people or they defrauded people or whatever it is. And I feel like it was kind of a similar situation where it's just like, I don't necessarily think that these people are bad. Like even um, Anna Delvey, I think she actually thought I'm going to pay all these people back one day when I build the Anna Delvey Foundation, things like that. Like, I don't think the fire Festival, what was his name? Billy McFarland. I know. Jesus that really sounds like... I don't think he, he was... It, yeah, I don't think so. No, don't get me wrong. I think he was like a scumbag, and I definitely think he was a sketchball, but I think that he thought he was no, going he, to figure it out. He wasn't pocketing the money. No, but he had a precedence, though, of like being sort of scammy yeah, mm-hmm. before all of this. Yeah. So like for me, it's like... Was once it again, it's shady? like... shady? He just did shady things. Yeah, and you know expected I mean? things that would, would pan out. He didn't. I think like sometimes people get so caught up in what they're doing that they forget like there are lives at stake. Like in regards to Fire Festival, like literally yeah. lives at stake. Um, also, kind of insane that this happened in 2017. Like it feels like it was two years ago. See, I feel like it was like 50 years ago. Oh wow, I thought it was like more recent. When you said it was 2017, I was like, really? Wasn't that like 2010? No, isn't that crazy? I mean, and to think that something like that could happen nowadays. Too. I just feel like, so again, I'm currently watching We Crashed and I was I started the Theranos one, but it was a little slow for me. Um, my attention span, I think everyone who watches probably sees I'm constantly moving and shit. Like I'm always like touching my hair, I'm touching this, I'm like fiddling with my micro, like my attention span is literally like this. And if you don't catch it, you you haven't caught it and you're done. We, we move on from that. Um, but I, so wait, so that one, I watched Adam Delvey, also very slow for me. Um, Tinder Swindler, I found was good. Yeah. But anyway, the point is like, Tinder Swindler, no. And I do think Adam Delvey was also, they're obviously like scammers yeah. or scammers to a degree and they're shady characters. But I think at a certain point, I think like what I've learned is, I think these people just have such, they like have a, like narcissistic belief that they can do anything and that they're, they are so, but like, I think I I totally get what you're saying, but I think it goes back to like, how do you view right versus wrong? Like, I think we have this dichotomy and a lot of people forget that there's gray, right? Because people like to bucket things as right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people are, are sort of in the morally gray area to some degree. Oh yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Like, as people who work at companies that are literally like audited on a day-to-day, not day-to-day basis, but like, you know, I feel like we, we have worked in corporations that just are held to a very particular standard that, you know, Theranos wasn't held to that mm-hmm. Uber maybe wasn't held to that they now are held to things like that. Um, or even like a bank, when I worked at a bank, like they're the shit that they, they gave like HR anti-money laundering training just because like, they want to make sure like their bases are fucking covered. But anyway, um, I feel like the difference is, and I was actually talking to one of my my friends who works at a startup and just listening to like the things that they do. I'm like, that's kind of brilliant. But at the same time, it's not illegal. It's not. It's like morally gray. It's where like innovation yeah. could potentially come from, but it's not regulated. So you're it, like, I'm going to see how far I can, you know. But, but I feel like the way that they see it is like, it's like scrappy. It's like literally get it done at whatever cost. And so I feel like. But I don't think a lot of these people are doing it out of scrappiness. I think a lot of them are doing it out of, um, I don't know, self-preservation. It depends, I guess, is like where the intent is coming from. Right. I don't know. I think like you need to watch more of We Crashed. Well, I think it's like if the intent is, like, for example, when I was watching, we were watching the first episode of We Crashed um, yesterday because I hadn't seen it. Alina was saying it was great. I think it's very, the first episode's not my favorite. Keep watching, I promise. Oh, I mean, I was still like enthralled with it, but um, the way that they portray, uh, what was his name? Adam Newman? No, not Adam Newman, um, the CEO of WeWork. Adam Newman? Oh, is that him? Mm-hmm. Oh, Daryl Little. Yes, Adam Newman. I thought that was the investor guy. His name was Adam Newman. Mm-mm. 
Oh, wow. Clearly, I'm losing it, y'all. Wasn't paying attention. Wow. Wow. You were really into a or two. I'm um, sleeping, so. But anyways, there was one scene where he, you know, saw his neighbor in the elevator, and the neighbor clearly had gotten takeout, and he was like, oh, come up, like, have a drink, and then the neighbor comes in with his food, and he opens up the fridge, he's like, oh, I could have sworn I had a six-pack, and his neighbor was like, oh, I have one upstairs, and he was like, oh, go get it and come back, and he starts opening this guy's food and putting it out on the table, and, like, the intent of it was, it's, it's a morally gray area, Right. Okay. But it's like the intent was self-preservation to yep. feed himself. Okay. So I know the exact scene because when, that's obviously very early on. Yeah. And my initial inclination about the show and about Adam Newman was this guy is a fucking con artist. Like, oh, another fucking con artist. Haven't we seen enough with Leviev and Anna and this one and Theranos and that one? As you watch it, you're going to realize, or the way I took it was he's not a, he's not like a shisty guy. He just was like, so not even confident, but like he wanted it so bad yeah. that he was willing to do whatever. And so his, his whole thing, and this is why it kind of crushed and burn was, well, that, and also there wasn't anything proprietary about we work was do whatever, like spend money to make money, spend money to grow. And people were like, wait, are you insane? And so that's literally why he got kicked out. But whereas going back to the whole festival theme about Fire Festival, I do think that like... It was fraud. It was straight up fraud. That was fraud. Yeah, 100% it was fraud. Yes, that was fraud. Yeah. But I also think part of it is like, I realize that these people literally, like they are wired differently. And they are just like... I am so great that we are going to Is that why, it like, white collar crimes are, like, not punished as much as, like, blue collar shit? Billy McFarland was, um, he was in jail for six years. Yeah, but, like, or Martha like, Stewart jail, where it's, like, he had, like, a fucking TV and, like, a beautiful view. Oh, did he? I didn't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Like, he wasn't, like, it wasn't actual jail. It's, like, the rich people version of jail. <laughs> Sorry. No, like, I'm going to lie. More like house arrest, okay, really. Well, I get that, but also at the same time, like, we can't bitch about it, and we're not going to go down this path, but, like, if I have to go to jail, I want to go to... Yeah, but how do you, like, what connections do I have to have in order to land in that one? How much do I have to spend for it? Like, I don't even know how these people, like, if I knew that, like, any legal action I took that was, like, borderline iffy, knowing that the worst case scenario would be, like, to go to, like, the Martha Stewart jail, that's what I call it, because I don't know what it is, um, I I feel like I would be security jail. I feel like I would take those risks. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, I fucking would. Man, I hope you would. Yes. Let's go. Let's Because imagine, words. like, if your cons- hold a on, thousand hold on, downloads of podcast. If your consequences, no, get, hear this. If your consequences are you get to go to those, like, types of prisons that you see on TV where, like, security's an issue, food is absolute shit, you're, like, in, like, a cellar that's just tiny. Oh, what's that show? Um, scared. 60 Days In. Or 60 Days In? Or Scared, was it Scared? Um, no, 60 days. That's what I'm talking about. But anyway, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. But you get what I'm saying? Like, if the consequences were that versus the consequences being the nice Martha Stewart jail where they have, like, a massive amount of space and nice bedding and, like, five-star Michelin meals, or I'm, like, over-exaggerating here, but to the degree that they're actually being taken care of, I would take more risks. That's probably why they're wired differently, if you think about it. I am such a rule follower. I don't think I would do that. I mean, you're a rule follower because you know what the consequences are given your tax No, because bracket. I... <laughs> Sorry, is that too much? Are you really poor? No. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you are not part of the 0.1%. Like, let's just say that. <laughs> According to fucking Uncle no, Sam. Sam. No, we're not. We're not. But you get what I'm saying? Like, the reason why is because you're wired differently because you know what the consequences are for your tax bracket. I'm just going to leave it with that. Maybe. Maybe. Take with it what you know. will. No, I literally... Take with like, it what you... Wait, so I was actually thinking, like, I'm the kind of person where, like, I'm always like, turn the music down, turn the music down, I don't want the neighbors to call, because if, if the cops came to my house, like, I, I think I would fucking drop dead, just because I just don't like being scolded. I got to talk about this with Debbie. We got to find out what, what trauma could lead to me being so scared of, like, someone telling me, like, you did this wrong. This also takes me back to the tarot card reading from <laughs> You know that perfectionism is actually, and people pleasing is a trauma response. So, yeah, I don't doubt it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to explore this because we also had tarot cards, our tarot cards read yesterday at this Coachella party. And I literally was just like, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Maddie's like, slash, she's like, look, 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 she's calling you out. And I was like, mm-hmm. like literally her face was like deadpan. Like she was not giving anything to this tarot card reader. And one card flipped over in particular and I saw it and immediately I fucking lost my shit to the point where the tarot card reader started laughing yeah. at me because of my reaction to that card. Like she hadn't even explained what that card was about yet. I just saw yeah. it and I knew what it was. And that was the only reaction I out of the whole event where you were just like, you literally just like started laughing yourself. You were like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, but, um, but anyway, the point is, I also, I think she said like, you know, part of it is like wanting to be her. Nah, she didn't use the word perfect, but like portray X and whatever. You want to be perceived um, a certain way and like liked by a whole bunch yeah. of people. And that's why you do things that don't necessarily, you know, know benefit you. Follower. I was a leader. I was trying to try to give you a compliment. Be like, no, you are a leader, but I was like, <laughs> no. Here's the, I think I'm a leader in some ways, but, oh, but as long as it does not mean I'm going to get in trouble because I don't like getting in trouble. Yeah. Like, look, I also didn't get in trouble a lot as a kid, which is maybe why I'm like, I just need to be that girl. I really didn't get in trouble. My mom didn't yell at me. <laughs> I just Mom, need you, you know I mean? to be like a little rebel. Like I'm going to make this happen one day. Well, we're, so we're going to go and we're going to have like a okay. crazy ass time. I'm going to do a music festival. We're going to do all the drugs. Oh God. We're no. going to like go and like, no. do like just follow our instinct and just like be intuitive and just like take the next step based Wait. on like what our intuition is telling us. So like without any rules, without having to give a shit about anybody, we're just going to, so we're going to burning man. Ooh, I really want to go to burning man, but I also don't know how well I would fare in Burning Man conditions. <laughs> Here's the thing. I can be bougie, but I can also slum it all the way down. I here. think that you can handle Burning Man. I could, yeah. Whereas I could not handle Burning Man. Yeah, you wouldn't. Are you kidding me? Barter? You want to fucking barter? I would go to the grocery store and, like, literally pay more just because I'm, I am I just hate, I don't like negotiation, which is wild because I negotiate for a living. And that doesn't bother me, but for myself, like, I'm like, oh, you $10? I'll give you 12 Just okay. to get out of this like I'm not, conversation. I, I, I just, I don't want to be part of this conversation. I don't like talking about money. You guys, I'm going to be my new psychological experiment is getting Alina to become the rebel of the group. I used to be pretty rebellious and that's the crazy thing. Okay. I think it's more like, it's just, uh, whatever. I okay. really used to be crazy. I, I used to, hello, I used to hitchhike home from fucking music festivals. That's a fair point. Sure. Okay. I'll give you that. I think I just don't want to go back to that. No, but I think that there's also an aspect of you that, like, people pleases to the point where, like, oh, 100%. you weren't, like, living truly authentically yourself when around certain others. Okay. On that note, we're going to let you all go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Basic in the Brain, where we psychoanalyze the shit out of each other. Yes. Cheers, Cheers. to that, bitch. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Bye, y'all.